Hello and welcome to Stacy's Studio. Today we are going to talk about op art. Op art is an art movement that started back in the 1900s with an artist by the name of Victor Vassarelli. He was a French Hungarian artist that originally went into medicine and decided that he really wanted to pursue art. So he went to art school as a way to fund his career as an artist. He became a graphic designer. And that really shows through when you see what he created, you know, the types of work he created. He's considered the grandfather of op art, like the one who started the art op art movement. And op art is simply optical illusions is what they create. But I pointed out his graphic design background because when you look at the sharp, crisp images that he creates, and if you were to like search him and see other works of his, you'll find that he has a very clean style to him. And that's usually indicative of a graphic designer. So today we're going to be making our version of an op art piece. And here it is. This is what we're going to create. So it'll be lots of fun. It will take you some time. It's not hard. It just requires patience. So you've got to have lots of patience for this. Other things that you're going to need is you're going to need some kind of paper. I'm using a sketchbook, but you can use anything that you want to. You'll need a pencil. You'll need an eraser, because you might need to erase. You need some kind of a straight edge. I have a ruler, but if you don't have a ruler laying around, choose a magazine or a book or a DVD cover, whatever's a straight edge that's in your house. And then also grab something that's round, a circle. So I, I went and grabbed a mixing bowl out of the kitchen. For our color, you can use anything that creates a mark. So if you have some colored pencils, that's what I'm going to use today. Um, if you have colored pencils, grab those. If you have crayons, you could use those. Markers, paints. If you don't have any of that, maybe just use the pencil. You could create this whole thing with the pencil. If you have an ink pen, you could use an ink pen. So whatever you have, use. Okay. Same thing with the paper. You know, you may not have a sketchbook. It's not that important. You just need to have something to work, a surface to work on. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your round object and you are going to trace it. I'm trying to center it here on the paper. It looks pretty close. And when you're making your initial drawing for your color, make sure that you're very careful that it comes out clean. Okay, you don't want an image that is not clean, where like maybe the circle didn't meet or that sort of thing. You want to make sure your your lines are nice and neat. Next, you're going to pick a spot somewhere on here, and I'm going to try to pick somewhere in the middle. And you're going to from that dot. You're going to create five lines coming off the page in different directions. Okay, So I'm going to set my ruler down. And I'm just going to give it a start. Oh, but don't go through the circle. Okay, That's a big, big important part. Okay, let's try this again. So lining it up. Make sure it's lined up with the dot. This doesn't, I mean, it can still work if you didn't line it up with the dot, but it's going to be neater if you line it up with the dot. So I have one line. Sometimes I have to keep count because I like, I, I get off. There's two. So I'm going to drag this down because my ruler wasn't long enough. So I'm lining it up. Make sure you line it up. I can't stress that to you enough. Okay, there's two lines. Go for three. Here will be four. Okay. 
again, make sure you are holding that ruler down and it's, it's, it's nice clean lines, okay? It doesn't matter if it's the same distance, but it does matter that they're nice and straight. Because as the op art, the optical illusion of it is that it's very clean. Okay, so you have, it looks like a sun. I'm gonna take out that dot, don't need that dot. And now what you're gonna do is create the illusion of a sphere inside the circle here. So first you wanna acknowledge, uh, make a mark for like the north pole, a south pole, the west side of the equator and the eastern side of the equator, okay? So, um, well, I was getting it off that line. I might as well just let it be part of that line. Okay, so maybe this is east and this is west, okay? Now, to create the sphere, what you're gonna do is make a curved line and your lines will always, your curves always return back to your, either the equator or to the north and south poles. Okay, so we're gonna make like a happy face. Okay, and we're gonna do one this way. I wanna actually rotate the paper because for me, it's easier to make those curves that way, even though that's, that one turned out a little flatter. I don't like that one, so I'm gonna erase. And I'm showing you this because if you need to erase, then erase. Don't be afraid. Don't think that every line you put down has to be perfect the first time you do it. You may not like it. Okay, so now it looks like I have an eye. Since I'm right here, I'm going to go ahead and do another one. I'm going to kind of split that space there. <coughs> and then I'm going to turn it around here and I'm going to do the same thing on this direction. There we go, looks like a beach ball. Now, I could leave it like that, but I really don't like that being such a big gap. But we'll leave it, we'll let it be a big gap. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm going from Hawaii to Tennessee. There we go, flip around. Now we're going from Tennessee back to Hawaii. Aloha. All right, I'm gonna do another one this direction. And do another one this direction. Okay. So here I'm just going to kind of clean up my lines a little bit. All right, now I have my sphere. Now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to create um, some ribbons in your background. So to do that, to create that, um, I'm going to make happy faces and frowning faces. So here I'm gonna start, I'm just gonna make a um, frowny face to begin with on this one. And then I'm gonna make a par another parallel all the way down for whatever space I have, okay? And then the next one, I'm gonna turn it just a little bit because it's easier for me. The next one I'm going to make I'm going to split from where this line was. I'll make happy face. Happy face. Happy face. Happy face. Okay. Rotating. Let's see if I make that clearer for you. There we go. Back to a frowny face. Frowny face. You're just gonna keep doing this 
take it all the way around. This one right here is a tight squeeze, so I'm just gonna I'm not gonna do it in this one. I'm just gonna do it in this one. Now I could do like just the corners. Again, just getting the little corners there. Last one. Okay. So there's my initial drawing. Okay. Now you're going to start by adding some color to it. Now you can pick anything you want. The one I showed you initially, I chose a I chose two complementary colors, blue and orange, and then I did my black my background in the black and white. Now just to switch it up a bit, I think what I'll do is I'll make my sphere black and white this time, and I'm going to make my ribbons a color, okay? So now the neat thing to do for when you're adding colors is to think of something that's high contrast. That's the reason this black and white works so well is because it's high contrast. So what I'm going to choose is for my background, I'm going to choose two other complementary colors, and I've already chosen purple and yellow. Purple and yellow are complementary because they are opposite of each other on the color wheel. So, to create the um, the background, the ribbons in the background, what we're going to do is we're going to do a value scale, okay? A value and showing values. So I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to pull this down so you can see some detail. I'm going to start here. And to create a value, what you're going to do is you're going to start with your darkest value. A value is like how light or dark something is. So I'm coming in pretty dark with the purple. I'll make that clear for you. There we go. All right, so you can see how I'm getting dark, a dark value. And I'm going to go back over a good way to create a smooth transition is to go diagonally back and forth. It's called cross hatching. But when you're going back and forth in a crisscross manner, it, it just helps it to blend. So as I'm coming away from that edge, I'm laying off the pressure of the pencil. And you can see how it's starting to get lighter. See if it'll come into focus. So I'm getting towards the center, I'm really kind of laying off the middle.
Okay, so you kind of see how it transitions. Now, if yours, if it looks like, if it looks like dark, stop, light, stop, then go back and forth in that crisscross manner that I was telling you. And it's going to, you don't have to press down hard either. It's just going to naturally fix itself. Okay. Now I will skip over, I'm going to skip one because think of it as a checkerboard kind of pattern. Okay, so you can see kind of a line where I've, I've met here. So I'm going back the opposite direction. And I'm easing off the pressure of the pencil. Now if you're like, but I hate coloring. Well, don't think of it as coloring. Think of it as shading, because that is what you're doing. It's all in the mindset of it. It's not a coloring book, although it's, you know, you kind of made your own coloring book image. It's not like that. Okay. So, let me see if I can make that clear again. I don't know why it doesn't want to stay focused. Okay, so in that layer, that's all I've got of the purple. Now I'm going to do the yellow. I'm going to do this yellow the same way. You might be like, but yellow is hard to see because it's so light. It is, but it does the same effect. And the yellow I'm using is kind of a, a brighter yellow. It's not like just a plain yellow. Now they're complementary colors because they are opposite on the color wheel. I may have already said that, so excuse my repetition if so. But what happens when they're complementary is when you put the two complementary colors together, they compete for attention and they bring out the best in each other. So you're going to get the best version of yellow and the best version of purple when you put the two colors together. It's not to say that you can't get a nice bright yellow when it's up against something else, but it's not going to, it's not trying to show off as much with the other colors as it is with the purple. So you get the better version of it. So you can sort of see how that's coming along, I think. Okay, and then I've got this one little tiny one up here. Now, okay, so I've got that covered. Now, when I go to the next section, I want to kind of make it a little bit opposite. So I started with purple here. I want to start with yellow on this one, okay? So think about, I know that they, they overlap here, but still think about it as a checkerboard, okay? So I'm going to start with the yellow here. And I'm going to go dark with the yellow. Again, I'm coming as I'm coming away from that edge, I'm going to loosen up how much pressure I'm putting on the pencil itself. 
So it's almost like you get to the point where you're barely touching the paper. Sorry, you can't see that. This is a nice shade of yellow. skip one and I'm doing the same thing on this one. And you're going to go you're going to do this all the way around. And this is why it was also important that you only did five lines because if you do an odd number then you might get stuck. And it won't work. And it is really important that you are conscious of what color goes next. Because if you end up putting two colors beside each other that don't belong, you know, like the same colors together, then it throws off the whole illusion. So this is one of those things you, can, you really do have to kind of pay attention to what you're doing. The outside's a little easier for that than the inside. The inside gets a little challenging. So you get the idea of what we're doing? Okay. Almost there. I've got three more sections to go. All right, so there's the background. It is complete. Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? So the next thing we're going to do is the sphere. And it gets the checkerboard pattern as well. So I decided that I want my sphere to be black and white checkerboard because that high contrast really works well with this. So what you can do is just start, like this is the biggest section, and I think I want that to be black. So the easiest way to make this work out correctly is plan it out first. So I've made a mark for black. I'm going to skip that's going to be white, and that's going to be black. Skip that, and that's going to be black. Okay? So that means this is white, this is black, this is white, this is black. This is black, white, 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 black. Okay, so that way you can guarantee you don't get two of the same color beside each other. So that's really important to make sure you mark that. And then you just go in and start adding the color. And when you're coloring in the sphere, make sure that you're trying to cover all of the white grains of the paper you're going to get a sharper image that way. If it's light, it doesn't mean it won't look good, but it will not look as crisp as if you take your time and really make that color solid. Now, if you had, if you have like pencils and then you even have some markers, this might be pretty neat to use markers in this portion of it. Now you're not worried about shading as far as like we did on the ribbons here. I'm calling them ribbons. It looks more like just, well, they look like ribbons to me. That's why I'm calling them ribbons. Um, it's just solid. You're just coloring these solids. So it's just really important to make sure though that you color it evenly, make it smooth, 
as you can. Don't rush it and remember to keep nice clean edges. Part of why I make this works and this turns out so good is if you keep your edges nice and clean. And take your time to be really careful. If you're like, but I can't color inside the lines. Well, this is a good time to try. Practice it. It is a skill everybody can do. It just takes patience because I told you that at the beginning. But I have patience. This isn't a hard project, but you do have to have patience. Um, and take your time with it and be neat. Care about the quality of what your project turns out to be. Okay, so there's one. If you're using colored pencils, you may have to sharpen them often. My black pencil is going down pretty fast. It's coming together almost. Just two more. Almost. And there we have it. You have an op art sphere. So I hope you try it out enjoy see how you like it if you do the project if you would post it to one of my sites i have visual arts at metaview on facebook or you can follow me at factory at metaview on instagram and if you'll post your drawings there it will be really neat to see everyone's interpretation of this project so I hope you enjoy, and I will see you next time.